Hi everyone, welcome to our beginner workout. Just going to give another minute for some people to join and then we'll get started. Alright, there we go, we've got a few people joining, hello. Good evening, welcome to our beginner workout. Um, yeah, so we've got a few people joined, so we'll get started. So today's workout, it's gonna be a mobilized stretch and activate workout, okay? So we're gonna have three different exercises in each grouping of exercises. We'll do 30 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. We'll move into the next exercise. We'll go through those three exercises and then we'll repeat for three sets, okay? I'll, just, I'll explain as we go. So we're gonna get started with a warm up here. So we're gonna drop down onto the ground, start by warming up our hips. So I'm gonna have my left knee pointing forward, my right leg pulled in behind, hands on either side of the knee. We're gonna start with the glute stretch. So nice and tall, we're hinging forward from the hip. The back stays pretty flat and then we can scan. So we can move in towards our feet, see if we feel the stretch a little bit more. We can go back towards the chest pointing towards the knee, see where we feel that the most. Just breathing and kind of sinking into that stretch a little bit deeper. Okay, from there we're gonna come back up, hands are on either side of the knee again, and then we're gonna walk our hands away from our feet. So I'm walking my hands away from my feet, creating that nice stretch through the hip flexor on the right side. I can look over that left shoulder if I wanna increase the stretch a little bit more, let some weight go on the right hand, rock back on the left, look over the left shoulder, getting a nice stretch all through the front of the hip. And again, we're always breathing through that. Okay, so that's great. We're gonna hit the other side now. So it's gonna be my right knee in that triangle position. My left leg's pulled in behind. Hands are on either side of my right knee, nice and tall. I'm gonna hinge forward from the hip. And then I'm gonna scan to see where I feel the tightest through those glutes. And I'm just gonna kind of drop into that a little bit more. Feeling that light stretch after a day of sitting. Good, so from there we're gonna come back up. So hands are on either side of me, and I'm gonna walk my hands away from my feet again. So I'm creating that big bow through the left side now, getting that stretch through the hip flexor quads into the core, looking over my right shoulder. Nice leg stretch, mobilizing those hips, getting ready to move. Great, so from there we're gonna pop up. So we're back up on the feet, we're gonna add in that upper body. So I'm gonna reach back with my right hand, really feeling the stretch through my chest as I'm reaching back. I'm gonna bring my elbow to my knee. So opposite knee, right hand reaches back, elbow to knee. So again, we're getting the core involved now. Getting a bit of balance on that right leg as we're lifting the left and getting that stretch through the upper body. Okay, we're gonna go to the left side. So reaching back with the left hand, elbow to knee. Reach. Elbow to knee. Good. Reach. You're going to add in a little bit more rotation so you can see I'm looking back at my hand. And one more. And that's great. Now we're going to add in a little bit of a lunge pattern, load the leg, get a little bit more stretch through the hip flexor, and rotate, okay? So I'm going to step forward onto my left leg. So that's loaded. Hands are going to go up in front of me, just wider than shoulder width. I'm going to turn to my left. And I'm going to push off that left leg and come back up to standing. Left leg's loaded. Turn, drive back up. Left leg loaded, turn, drive back up. Do one more on this side. And now we'll hit the other, so the right side. Stepping forward with my right leg, I'm gonna to turn to my right, and then drive back up. So, bigger step, a little more challenging. If we need a little less, take a shorter step, drive back up. Last one, and that's great. So we're warmed up. So we'll get into our sets. So the first one we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be a supine a knee circle. We're gonna do a lying glute stretch and then fire hydrants as our activate exercise, okay? So I'm gonna start my timer, um, which is gonna tell me when to move on to the next exercise. Um, and then we'll go from there, okay? So we get down, so we're on our backs. So the lying knee circles, so we can be lying on our back and then we're just moving our knees in circles. Okay, so if we need a little bit more gentler, we can use our hands like this. If we want a little more challenge, we can start moving our knees in a circle. Our hands are out to the side. We can do a little bit bigger circles, kind of mobilizing the hip, mobilizing the low back, 
And you can even get the core activating a little bit if you're like this. Okay, so it could be either way. Perfect, so from there, we're gonna go into that glute stretch. Okay, so uh, my left leg's down on the ground, my right ankle is gonna go on my uh, left thigh, and then if I wanna make it a little more intense, I can pull my knee like this. So pull my, my thigh towards me. Okay, we're gonna breathe in that position. So 15 seconds on one side, then we're gonna switch to the other. So my right foot goes down, my left uh, heel comes up on my right thigh, I can pull it towards, or if I'm getting a stretch there, I can just leave it like that. So whatever you need. Great, and then the last one we're gonna do, so we've got 10 second rest, but it's gonna be a fire hydrant. So we're gonna get in this all four position, hands are under the shoulder, knees are under the hips, and then we're just going out to the side, okay? So we can alternate here, one side, then the other. Okay, you're just taking the leg right out to the side. You're going to feel your glutes firing up here a little bit. You're going to feel some hip mobility as well. You're trying to move the foot and the knee together. You're trying to stay pretty stable through the upper body as you do this movement. Good, so that's our first round. So we're going to be back down on our back. And we're going to start again with the supine knee circles. I'm gonna bring them up, we're gonna start now. And again, if I feel good with this, if this is giving me a little stretch, a little bit of mobilization through the low back and the hips, that's good. If I want a little more challenge or a little bit more mobilization, I can do some bigger circles. And I'll just use my hands to stabilize me a little bit so I don't fall on my side. Okay, we can go both ways. Good, just moving, getting that low back, getting the hips activated and moving. And then we're gonna rest. So we got 10 seconds, and then we're back into the glute stretch. So my left foot's gonna stay on the ground. I'm gonna bring my right heel, or my right ankle, up on the thigh, and then I can either leave it there if I'm feeling a stretch already. I can walk my foot towards my bum if I need a little more stretch from that perspective or I can grab my left thigh and pull it towards my chest to get more of a stretch. Okay, that's 15, so we'll switch to the other side, right legs down, and then find your version of that glute stretch that works best for you. Relax, feel the muscle lengthening, and we're on our rest. So while we're resting, let's transition into the position for the fire hydrant. So hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips, and we're just alternating sides. So we wanna make this a little more demanding, totally up to you, but we could do a quarter rep. Okay, so you take it out, come down a quarter, back up a quarter, then all the way down. Out, up, down a quarter, back up a quarter. So it adds in a one and one quarter component there. A little bit more tension in that most challenging position and time. So up to you, you don't have to do that, but if you wanna uh, work the glutes a little more, you feel like you need a little bit more demand, you can add that in. Okay, so we're back on our back, the legs come up, we're back into our hip circles, or, sorry, knee circles. Moving them around, just getting that little bit of mobility in the hip. Maybe feeling the low back stretch a little bit too as you take the legs around. If your hips start to get tired, you can just grab the legs. The circles will be a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Good, keep working around. And that's great, so we've got 10 seconds, and then we're gonna go into our lying glute stretch. Okay, so here we go, foot's down, left foot's down, right ankle's up on that left thigh, and I'm gonna pull it in just to get a little bit more of a stretch, but you do what's right for you. So I'm breathing through that. Four more seconds in this position. And now we're switching to the other side. So my right foot goes down. My left heel goes on my right thigh. We can either walk that in, the foot towards our bum. We can pull the leg in if we need more stretch. And we're resting. So we're gonna move back into that fire hydrant position. Hands under the shoulders, knees are under the hips. And then we're just taking that leg out to the side. The abduction, 
Get the glutes firing, get the stabilizers of our hip. Getting a little bit of mobility. You may feel it through the groin, stretching a little as the leg goes out to the side. Push those hands into the ground. Feel that stability through your shoulders as well. I know it's a hip exercise, but we are getting that activation of the upper body, the core. And we're done. So that's our first uh, grouping of exercises done. We have a minute. Catch our breath. Uh, grab a drink if you need. The next grouping, so we're going to have biceps and wrist. So a mobilization for that. A stretch for our wrists. And then a close grip push-up. So we're going to have our hands relatively close. Uh, they're not kind of wide like our regular push-up, but we'll have them, um, you know, go shoulder width apart when we're going through the push-up. Okay, so we've got about 30 more seconds. So for this one, uh, biceps and wrist stretch, we'll start with our hands down on the ground. We're over the hands. The fingers are pointing back towards our thighs, and then we're just going to sit back a little, and you'll feel a stretch through your wrist into your bicep, just a light stretch, okay? So we'll get started with that. Um, so yeah, down on the ground. Here we go. Back. We're into round two now. We're group two. We're down, I'm just coming back a little, and I'm feeling that light stretch through my forearms into my biceps. I always say on these, if, if the stretch is a scale of one to 10, 10 is like, ah, oh, it's painful, it should not be a 10. It should be like a six or a seven, like, oh yeah, I, I feel something stretching there, but, but I can relax into it. I can let the muscle lengthen. If it's too intense, the muscle's gonna contract and try and protect itself. Okay, so we're resting. 10 seconds, we'll stay down. So for the wrist stretch, what we're going to do is we're going to get in the same position, but now I'll be much further forward, and I'm going to bend my elbow now. So it really takes my bicep out of it. You can see how I have the bend in my elbow. My hands are almost beside my legs. And when I bend my elbow now, and again, just a gentle stretch, it's more through my wrist, and I get it more through here, not very much through my bicep, really not through my bicep at all. The same thing, just that light stretch, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it's a six, maybe a seven. But those are great for our wrists after maybe uh, working with our hands all day, working on a computer, whatever it may be, those muscles can tighten up, so it's really good to mobilize them. Okay, we're into our close grip push-up now. So our hands are about shoulder width apart. So the elbows are gonna be like a little tighter to your body with this. Okay, so we can try the push-up. If that's too challenging, we're going to do a modified push-up position. Or if you have something close by, a couch, um, the back of the couch, whatever it may be, you can do an incline position if you need as well. Okay, so lots of different options there. Just try and get full range if you can. Nose and chest touch whatever you're going towards. Okay, so we've got our rest now, so that's one grouping. Okay, so we're going to start again with the wrist uh, and bicep stretch now. So my hands are down, my fingers are pointing towards my legs. Uh, arms stay straight this time, and I'm just sitting back. Nice light stretch through the front of the forearms into the bicep here. Breathe while you're doing this, so really try and relax. Encouraging that lengthening of the muscle that may have been shortened a lot of the day. We want to restore those length tension relationships across joints. Okay, so we're resting now. So for the just the wrist stretch, we're going to bring the hands more beside the knees. And on this one, remember we're going to bend the elbows a little. Just a light stretch. Do not force anything. I can breathe through this. You know, this is pretty easy. But trust me, by the third set of those uh, close grip push-ups, we're gonna we're gonna be enjoying this rest and recovery here. So we've got ten more seconds. Feel that muscle lengthening. Maybe you get a little bit more uh, into the stretch as we go through these. Good. We're resting, but we're getting ready for that close grip push-up. Okay. So the hands are about shoulder width apart. The arms are going to stay a little closer to the side than maybe we normally would for a push-up. Focus on the technique here. So nice and controlled. Making sure everything feels good. If we need those regressions, they're available to us. We can go off the knees, or we can go off something that's elevated. Stairs, back of the couch. 
and you'll get a lot more triceps with these close grip push-ups. Great, so that's two rounds down. We're on to our third one here, okay? Four seconds, three, so we're getting the hands back down. Fingers are pointing towards us. Nice straight arms. Just sitting back into that a little bit. Trying to kind of keep the heel of the hand down on the ground as we sit back there into the stretch. Again, relaxing. The wrists are an often neglected part of our body that, uh, you know, don't get enough stretching, don't get enough care. So it's good to take care of them through the day. It's a great stretch. You could do something like this even during the day, right? If you're, if you're starting to feel tension in there. Okay, so we're, uh, hands are beside us. We're bending the elbows now this time. The elbows are bending. We're gonna feel it more just through the wrist. We're not gonna hit the bicep quite as much. Breathing through that. That light stretch all through the front of the arm, front of the forearm, lower arm. All right. And then we're back into our push ups. So get set, hands are about shoulder width apart, arms are a little tighter to our side. Again, do what's appropriate for you. If we need to go off the knees, not a problem. I'm thinking about it here. And I'm gonna go because I'm gonna try and get a few more reps. Keep the core tight, nice straight line through the body. You don't want the back dropping as we're doing this. And there we go, good work. So that's group two done. Group two's done, two more to go. Okay, so the third one we're gonna do, we have about a minute rest. Again, grab that drink, focus on the breathing to recover here. Um, so we're gonna do hamstrings. So we're gonna have hamstring toe touch, hamstring stretch, and then a deadlift. So the deadlift can be body weight, or if you have some weight around, you can use a little bit of weight while you're going through it. Key, nice form, hinging from the hips, not rounding through your back when you're doing the deadlift. Okay, so we'll get started on this one. So the toe touches, we're just reaching up, hinging from the hips, reaching down as far as we comfortably can. Reaching down. I like this one, nice dynamic movement. Each time I feel myself dropping just a little bit lower into the stretch. 10 more seconds. I like to reach up just to lengthen everything and then hinge forward again. That's great, so the hamstring stretch, um, we'll get 10 seconds to recover, but I'm gonna put my leg out in front of me, so my right leg nice and straight, toes pulled towards me, and then I'm just gonna hinge forward from the hip. So I feel a nice stretch all through the back, of my uh, right leg here. And again, it's really all about hinging from the hip. I don't want to round through the back. I want the stretch to come from my hamstring. Good, so I'm going to hit the other side. Same thing, my hip goes back. Nice flat back. My toes pulled towards me. My left leg's nice and straight. I'm getting that pull all through the back of my left leg, the upper leg. Good, and I got a couple light weights here. So I'm gonna grab them for my uh, my deadlifts. So deadlifts, feet are hip width apart, toes point straight forward. I'm gonna hinge from my hips, stand up tall. Okay, when we go forward, nice flat back. That's the key, it comes from your hips, not from your low back. Your low back should stay in what we call a neutral position. Good. I have a little soft bend in my knee as I hinge forward. So you can see really my lower leg doesn't really move at all. time. Good. And when I put those down, again, I try to keep that back nice and flat. Bend from the hips, bend from the knees. Okay, three seconds. We're back into our toe touches. So I'm reaching up. I'm hinging forward, feeling that stretch all through the back side of my body. Reaching. And I'm already getting lower. When I started, I was just kind of getting to the toes. Now I'm hitting the mat, hitting the toes easily. Reach. 
Nice little stretch all through the back side of the body. Great, so 10 seconds. Then we're into the hamstring stretch. So I'm gonna start on my right side again. Nice straight right leg, the heels in contact with the ground, toe pulled towards my shin, hip goes back, back stays flat as I hinge forward. I can kind of balance myself. So my left leg, you can see the foot's flat, knees bent. I can just put my hands on my left uh, thigh to balance myself. And then I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna have left leg straight, toes pulled towards the shin, hinge from the hip forward. As I breathe, I sink into it a little bit deeper because I'm relaxing a little more as I sink in. And that's great. Good work, everyone. So we're on to our deadlift next. So again, either body weight or we can use an implement. Okay, hinging from the hips. Good. Keep in here at the top, stand tall, squeeze the glutes, core is tight. You don't want to over arch and kind of put any extra stress on your low back. You're just standing nice and tall. Almost like that plank where everything's stacked at the top, shoulders, hips. Knees, feet, everything's in alignment. And you go as fast or as slow as you need to with those movements. So if you're really good with the technique, you can hinge quickly, stand up tall. But if you need to work on the form, go a little slower. So we're back into our toe touches. Last set of these. I like to spend some time as I'm hinging forward in the bottom here, and then you can come up a little quicker now that we're used to the movement. But again, go at your own pace. That's the key with these. Hinge, feel that stretch, back up. Feel the stretch, back up. Good, 10 seconds, then we're into the hamstring stretch. I'm gonna start on my right side again. So heels out, toes pulled towards my shin. I'm going to hinge. I can support myself here with my hands on my uh, left thigh. Want even more of that stretch? Lengthen my spine. Head stays up, hip goes back. Feeling that all through the back of my leg. We'll hit the other side. So left, uh, left heel is in contact with the ground, toes pulled towards the shin. Hinging the hip back. Nice and long through my spine. But a six or seven on a scale of 10 with that stretch, not too intense. Okay, we're going back into the deadlifts here. Again, make sure we pick that up with good form. We're in position, hinge, here we go. Last set of these. Focus on the technique. You should feel only your hamstring and your glutes really. You shouldn't feel your low back. If you're starting to feel your low back, maybe you're going a little too low. Maybe you only need to go to here. If we go any lower, maybe you're round. So we stop there, okay? Keep yourself moving within the, the current range that you have. And that's great. So we're resting again there. About a minute. Catch our breath. Take a drink if we need. And then we're going to be into our last group, which is going to be uh, thoracic spine windmills, cobra stretch and then dead bugs. So we're gonna get a little bit of upper body, thoracic spine, uh, lumbar spine mobility, and then a little bit of core activation here. Okay, so let's get into it. So last one, uh, we're starting now. So you're gonna start on your side, okay? The knees can be stacked like so. Uh, hand out in front, bottom hands out in front, and here we go. So the windmill's gonna look like this. I'm gonna put my top hand on, and then we're just going around in a circle like so. Put the windmill all the way around, and then we can windmill back. Okay, and back to that start position. Go back around and back. One more. Okay, and then we gotta hit the other side. So I'm gonna switch here. You'll see from the other view. So knees are stacked. I'm coming around like so. I'm gonna look at my hand, and then I'm coming back around. Around, opening up, and then back around. Okay, a little cramp for space there, but. Nice one to open up the uh, upper upper spine, T spine. So we're on our on our stomachs here, and we're just going into this cobra position. Okay, so just extending whatever's comfortable for you. So my hips stay down, my hands are under me. I can push myself up, and look up with my head. Okay, 
Okay, and you go what's comfortable for you. So if here feels comfortable, then that's fine. You make it a little stretch through your abs. You may feel a little bit through the low back. We don't want it to be too intense through the low back, right? Like I said, just a light little stretch. Okay, so last one's gonna be the dead bug. So we're gonna be on our back for this one. So knees are up, hands are up. So knees and feet are up. And then we're just doing opposite limbs are going out. Okay, so my right leg goes out, my left hand reaches back. Okay, left leg goes out, right hand reaches back. My core is staying engaged the whole time, connecting my body, connecting my upper and lower body. So my spine stays in that neutral position. And again, I want to see the, feel those abs engaged. So I don't want to feel a flaring of my ribs, my low back, or my low back flattening. It's just staying in that same neutral position, okay, as those limbs are moving uh, back and forth. Okay, so that's our first round. We're going to go back into the thoracic spine windmill. So we're on our side, we're going around, coming back. So you feel a little stretch to your chest. Again, let the head relax down. As you go through, we'll do three there, and then we'll hit the other side. So we're flipping onto our other side. Knees are stacked, opening up, coming back around. Opening up, feel that stretch, come back around. Open up, and back around. Good. Do what's comfortable for you on that one. We don't have to force the hand down to the ground. Um, if it's off the ground, no problem. You just want to feel that light stretch through the chest as you open up and then come back around. So we're lying prone from here, just working ourselves up into whatever is comfortable for that cobra. Try and breathe into your belly when you're doing this one. And just go with what's comfortable, okay? Doesn't have to be a huge bend through the back. We're just going easy with this one. Good, so then we're back into the dead bug. So we're gonna be getting back on our back. Knees are pulling up, feet are knee height, okay, and opposite limbs move out. Opposite limbs, and get the heel to touch down to the ground, the hand to touch down to the ground. Keeping that core engaged the whole time as we're moving through this. Okay, if that's a bit too challenging, we could just do the feet if you want. Out, feet in, okay, or the opposites works as well. And that's time. Here we've got 10 seconds and we're back into those uh, thoracic spine windmills again. We might as well get on our side here. Nice and stacked. Hands are stacked. Around and back. Around and back. Around and back. And then we're hitting the other side. So just roll over. Good. Come around, let the head drop. Look at your hand. That helps encourage that stretch and that rotation through the thoracic spine. And one more. Good. So while we're resting, we're going to move uh, onto our belly. Keep the position for that cobra. And here we go. So whatever's comfortable for you, come up. Bending. Breathing. flexed a lot of the day, so this little bit of extension can be really beneficial. If you need a break to come out of it a little, no problem. Go a little easier. Great, and then last one, we're moving into our dead bug again. We're on our back, knees come up, feet are knee height, hands are up. And here we go, opposite limbs moving, or if you're just moving the feet, no problem. Keep that core engaged. Look on that neutral spine. Don't let your ribs pop up. Feel that tension through your abs. Good. Keep that core tight. Almost there. Keep moving. And time. Great work, everyone. So we made it.
So that was our mobilize, stretch, and activate for today. Um, excellent work. We'll just do a little cool down. So if you need to grab a quick drink, no problem. Uh, focus on your breathing here. We're going to start by stretching out the upper body and the lats a little. Reach both hands up. We're going to grab our right wrist with our left hand. We're going to lean to our left. And we can pull with our left hand a little. We're going to get a stretch all down that left side through the lat, through the upper body there. Rotate down out of it. We're going to reach up. We're going to do the other side. So we're grabbing the uh, left wrist with the right hand, leaning to the right. Breathing through that. And we can rotate down out of that. We're going to hit the hip flexors again. So I'm going to grab on the wall a little bit of support. I'm going to grab my right foot, bring my heel towards my bum, push my hip forward, keep my core tight. So I'm going to feel that through my right quad, into my right hip flexor. And I'm breathing, recovering, and using that breath to get a better, deeper stretch. Powerful stuff. Breathing is so important. We're going to hit the other side now. So again, I can get support. If you want to work on your balance, no problem. You can take the hand off the wall, grab my left foot, pull it towards my bum, pushing my left hip forward, keep my core tight so I don't arch through the low back. Stretch all through the front of my uh, left quad, left hip flexor, and even be into the core a little. And I'm breathing through that. And then we're going to just finish with one of the exercises that we did during the, uh, during the workout today. So we're going to do those toe touches. So we're reaching up. We're going to hinge forward. Good. Reaching up. Hinge forward. Feeling that stretch. One more. Reaching up. Hinging forward. Nice stretch all through the back side of our body. And that's it. Great work, everyone. Uh, good way to end a, uh, a Thursday evening. Um, have a great